All right, welcome everybody to the I Cut My Own Hair podcast. I am here joined by the lovely Justice. I don't know, Stanford last name. Stanford. Stanford, yep. She's a friend of mine. We've been cool since how many years now? 20. Not 20 when years. I, oh. No, no, no. That'd be a minute. <laughs> yeah. When did I come to the gym? 2018? Was it 2018? I think so, because it was before COVID. It was way before COVID, but it was like way before COVID. I feel like it was like 2017. It was It was like a little before my 21st birthday, and I'm 25 now. Okay, 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 yeah. yeah. That'll be a math question we can figure yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> math, yeah, nah. I don't, oh. But it's been like five years. Yeah, that's a wow. That's kind of crazy to think about. Yo, that's a that's a wow. That's a whole child. That's That's been a minute. Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> child. That's wild. Yeah, damn. Literally. Like I said, your class was the first class I took at Ronan. Yeah, and I had locks then. Mm-hmm. Yo. No, you didn't have your locks, but you had, you didn't have your locks because I remember when I saw a picture of you with your locks, uh-huh. I was like, Dre had locks? And because they were big, it must have been like right after you cut them. Okay, yeah, so it had to be 2018. Yeah, so I think it was like 2018. Ah, you Wow! Yeah, it's been five years. It's been a minute. Yo. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah. Kind of crazy. Well, this is Justice. She is a jujitsu blue belt still, right? Mm-hmm. She competes on the, like the national circuit, IBJJF, and all the other letters. <laughs> Just like <laughs> mad letters, bro. Um. That's how long have you been competing? Uh, honestly, since I started like doing jujitsu more just jujitsu like so i would say like four years if i've been at the gym for like five i've probably been competing for like four Mm. because i remember as soon as i got interested in jujitsu yeah um i had my friend victoria i remember victoria yeah Yeah. Yeah. and we were like head and head first like ready to go so we like legit did a tournament like maybe six months into like competing Uh we both got smashed quick like legit drove down to like atlanta (laughs) I was like tapping like thirty seconds into my first match. <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready." Vito's like, "Yeah, go ahead." And just yeah. ah! we were done. Yeah. We were done. But so I've been competing for like four years now. Yeah, I've been busy, but it's been cool because I've got to travel a lot. Like I went to Brazil last year. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you did. It was you, Emily, and Melvin, Melvin. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Vitor too. Yeah, Vito. Yeah, the curmudgeon. Scary, especially seeing him <laughs> over there compete too. I was like, he really is crazy like in the sense of how good he is oh yeah no Vito is amazing yeah yeah i would never tell him he's my favorite grappler <laughs> i would never tell him that to his face because like I, when i was in when i was in phuket i was like bragging about him mm-hmm. but i would never tell him that even he's probably not even gonna watch this but i would never tell him like yo that's my favorite grappler. like i watch him i'm like yo, i want to know how to do what yeah. he does that's that's what's great i'll go into like a couple months ago i went into a rabbit hole of just watching his old videos and i'm like i don't think people like I mean, even me, I've only been around, like, martial arts, like, really studying it for, like, five years. But, like, you know, people that just come into the gym for hobby realize how, how good he is. How good and scary he is. Yeah, he it's to awesome, be. yo. It's crazy. It's all, like, because he, he, he rolls, like, how I want to. Like, that smash pass, I mm-hmm. really like that. And I like the fact that it's, like, real simple. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't like Baron Bolowin and all that rolling on the neck and all that. Like, the two things I like is smash pass and then I really love Jake because I love, like, Half guard. Yeah. Those are the two things. And butterfly because I have strong legs. But Butterfly's those two. Good too. But those two things. But like, yeah, Vitor, yeah. It's like, I was, what's funny is when I was in Phuket, um, one of the instructors act like knows him, like knew him because he, he helped raise Vitor because like, he was an oh, older, wow. yeah, he was a jujitsu instructor. He's an older dude. Uh, I forgot, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot his name. But he's a really nice guy. But we were talking and I was telling him where I came from. Mm-hmm. And I was telling, like, GF team and I started talking about Vitor. He's like, Vitor, he was like, oh, yeah, I remember him. He was a little boy and he's doing jujitsu. It was like, I remember. I'm like, word? He was That's like, yeah, crazy. take a picture, take a picture. So, and so you can send it to him. I took a picture. I sent it to him. Vito's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. Oh, no way. Yeah, Vito's like, he's like Superman. He really is. Yeah. When, he, when he wants to be. Because, like, yeah. that's the thing. He'll, like, turn off and on. But he literally could train. He could yeah. decide he's going to compete in a month, train, like, for three weeks, and then just, like, be fine. dummy everybody. Yeah. He'd be perfectly fine. But, yeah, the dude, yeah. Ah, uh, oh, man, I just forgot his name. But he's also a black belt. But he was, but he was like, yeah, I remember him when he was a little boy. I, you know, obviously, Vito's been doing jiu-jitsu all his life. He was yeah. like, yeah, I was, I was watching him then. I'm like, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. How are the classes there compared to here? I would say, like, I actually got a stripe out there. 
Oh I was, shit. Yeah, yeah. I um, it's I would say there's not there is a lot of good grapplers out there because there's like a lot of Russians, but not even the Russians. There's a lot of Brazilians there. Yeah. Um, and it and since I left, I can't wait to go back though because now there's more black belts. But I would say it's not as like it's intense because Leo he Leo he's the um instructor now because I forgot the other gentleman's name who knows Vitor but um he went back to Brazil I don't know if he came back yet but he let Le, uh, Leo teach the class and um he's really good he reminds me of like Vitor slash bro like he's like mm-hmm. intense like Vitor and like he's a little smaller than Vitor but intense yeah. like him and but like he's more he's more approachable Vitor is like yeah. Vitor like chilling. Like not really wanting to talk to nobody. Like he he be chilling, not really he he be chilling, but he's like more like bro like. But he yeah. reminded me of Vitor how intense he rolls. Oh, that's but cool, yeah, but I would say that uh, grappling there is is not as it's high level, it's a lot of high level, but it's not as like com, uh, competitive based. Even though mm-hmm. even though he does compete all the time, and a lot of the people there compete all the time. But what I mean by competitive based, like where it feels like every time you go to class, it's like a damn IBJJF yeah. match. Like, it feels like somebody's trying to win something yeah. when you go to Ronin. That's like, kind of cool, though, because you can learn, you know what I mean? Like, you can, like, practice new stuff a little more rather than, like, yeah. fight to the death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I would say, like, it don't, like, it can be moments, obviously, like, in any gym where you, right. like, have to fight to the death, but overall, it's, like, training, hard rolling, but the hard rolling isn't like, yo, we, I'm trying to walk out of here with a belt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> your fam, like, why you... World championship right here. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we know. So, yeah, it was cool, though. And it's... But what I will say is, like, what makes it a little better than Ronin, rolling-wise, is that it is so hot, it is so terrible. Mm. It Yeah, I almost had a heat stroke the first yeah. day I rolled because it's so hot. I've been in gyms where they don't turn the heat, or they don't turn the AC on, so it gets hot. That's different. <laughs> yeah, and then since we don't have to wear rash guards because it's hot, bro, yeah. Oh, that's nice, too. Yeah, it's so hot. Damn. Yeah, but so you've been competing for four years and, like, gotten really into it. When was your first, like, win like? What did that feel like? Excuse me. Um, I think my first one that I was, like, super excited about was the Arnold. And I honestly didn't even win. I got second. But uh-huh. I had, it was like a 14-person bracket, and it was round robin, which was nice, because the yeah. IBJJFs are like single elimination. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just did really well in the sense of like, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you're not about to just strangle me without me yeah. knowing what just happened. <laughs> Literally, I yeah. was like, I might get strangled, but I know what I did wrong. <laughs> but that was, I really like that. Um, but the most excited win I've had recently, fuck. That's a good question. That's kind of hard to answer. I would say, actually, a fight to win. I did a no-gi fight to win match uh-huh. late last year in Cleveland. And I remember when I first started jiu-jitsu, I would watch the fight to win events, like on flow grappling and stuff. Yeah. And I wanted to be on one so bad because, I mean, they're still, like, I mean, they're touring right now and, like, still shows and stuff. But I thought, like, when you were on that, like, that was, like... You, you, you made it. Yeah, yeah, I was like, that is legit. So that was kind of a full circle, actually, when I got on that um, card. And I was like, wow, I actually like really wanted to be here, and I'm here. Nice. But, nice. Yeah, that was cool. That was really nice. Cool. And that's wild. Like, you went from working front desk, initially doing Thai, and then doing Thai and jujitsu, mm-hmm. and then, like, I don't want to get punched anymore. And then go I to... did two more Thai fight camps. If I you know remember. you did. And I was like, yo, this ain't for me. <laughs> you were supposed to do nationals. He was I, like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's because, I mean, I love Ty, though. Like, I like going to the classes still and, like, hitting the pads and stuff. But I was like, everyone there, or at least the ones that are doing nationals, like, those camps at Boggs Runs, like, those are legit. Even the two-day camps yeah. that we would do. Yeah, I mean, you ran with me that mile one time. Like, I need push, which is good. Yeah. But I was like, I cannot handle getting punched in the face <laughs> <laughs> like yo you can choke me but if you punch me yeah and that's what i problem. realized too i was yeah. like you know jujitsu has its challenges just as tied but like yeah. my heart was with jujitsu i really loved jujitsu and i like whether i won or lost or got like beat up or won like i was like i still really enjoy it which i do with tai too but like to put like the time to compete i was like it was with i gotta focus on one it was 100 percent with jujitsu nice nice that's dope keep your hands up i was like motherfuckers my hands are up <laughs> they're coming <laughs> this, through this just hurts <laughs> It's all of this hurts. <laughs> yeah, so you've competed for four years now, and you've had your 
you know, your full circle moment of training, I mean training, well, competing at Fight to Win. Mm -hmm. And what are you aiming for next after that? Like, what's the next, like, big thing that you want to do? I would like to win, like, a higher tournament, like Pans or Worlds or, um, like, Nationals or something like that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, like, the rest of this year, I want to focus on Nogi more, and it'd be really cool to, like, you know, at least a medal at Worlds. Yeah. I, that's, like, kind of... That's been a thought in the back of my head that I've just been, like, you know, casually having creep up. Yeah, that you want to win the big tournaments? Yeah, because, you know, I've, I've been feeling more comfortable at them, and I've been competing a lot, so I feel, like, really experienced, and I feel, like, the cliche saying I learn every time I go, but I feel more comfortable every time I go, too, so, like, I don't feel as nervous. Um, and this past Pans, I did well. I lost in the quarterfinals, but, like, I was really happy overall with my performance. I got choked out in the quarterfinals, like, right on camera, and in my head, I was like, this is right on my face <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wasn't upset you know I knew yeah. the girl was gonna be like tough going in cause yeah. I watched some of her stuff before yeah um, so I'd say like Nogi Worlds at the end of the year is my next one okay that's cool mm -hmm. that's cool and so what was that like your most like devastating loss like the one that you like really remember the pans uh actually no I would say my second pans I have done pans four times uh -huh. at Blue Belt because I, I got promoted um, and I literally signed up like the night I got promoted to do Blue Belt pans. Um, I got on board pretty quick and I was pretty upset about that because I was like, oh, you know, like I'm so ready. I'm going to yeah. go to this. But that was the first time I ever did like a bigger tournament yeah. that wasn't like an open either. I would say that was my most like depressing loss, but I don't think I've had any loss knock on wood that has like really hurt yet you know what i mean i got you because i feel like i'm still you know i'm doing it as my hobby and i like you know put the time into it and stuff yeah. but i haven't like went for something that like i really like I'm like, yeah you oh. haven't like set a goal like yeah i'm about to win abu dhabi and blah blah exactly. blah yeah yeah okay. i think that i mean that just comes with the experience but the fact that yeah that's wild that you went from working front desk Doing the big, oh, yeah, you did do my doing the beginning of MMA, trying to figure out what you wanted to do, yeah, and then like just really going like you know all the way in on jujitsu. I did that free week trial. Your class was like the 10 a.m. MMA beginner, yeah, and I I remember it was like me maybe like four or five, just random other dudes, yeah. yeah. At the end of it, I ended up working front desk and like, it really is crazy. I cannot believe it's been five years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you're the reason I got my driver's license. I used, oh, yeah. I was using your, I had to use your car because it was small enough to get through. in my car. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. Like, yo, oh. mad life. Mad life happened. That's wild, yo. Something that's funny at the gym, like, people say all the time, you can meet or find anything you need is at the gym. Yeah. You know, if you need someone to fix your car, someone's going like to fix 30, it. It's like 30,000 mechanics. Yeah, if you need someone to, like tell you like what's wrong like there's a nerd you know like anything you need yeah melvin and i think sebastian and i like they helped me move yeah you probably helped me move I like probably, maybe yeah melvin <laughs> helped put up like um outlets and stuff in here because he's like that mr fix it oh, like you know to melvin he is a helper yeah he <laughs> he knows how to yeah he, he just randomly knows how to do mad he like really i feel like does. he's like a he's like not even a janitor he's like a janitor jesus or something he, really he just knows is. mad fixing stuff he really is he's fixed my car for me before too so yeah it's yeah, it's like it's wild <laughs> mechanics at the gym doctors nurses cops firemen like stoners everything so <laughs> yeah it's, uh, landlords real estate agents literally yeah. But that's cool. I mean, I've met a ton of people from the gym that I would not meet anywhere else. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, our paths would have never crossed. I mean, even, like, friends that I talked to every day, like, we would have never met in any other way because we just wouldn't have been in the same place at the right. same time. Right, yeah. That's true. Yeah, because, I mean, the great thing about that place is that um, everybody has to be nice to everybody because you never know who can kill you. Mm -hmm. Like, you at any true given that. time. And any, no matter how good you are, whatever day you're having, like, if like you never know who could beat the living shit out of you, sure so that. you should just probably be nice. Literally, and I feel like people that don't just have like that level of respect don't last long anyway. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody at that gym now that is somebody that you like. Ah, yeah. Like we've had those, but they've like they come and go. They for sure. they left, but they, but there's no one that we universally see there. We like. Ah, yeah. Yeah. 
They yeah. don't they don't stay long, which is nice. But yeah, they definitely come and go. But I feel like honestly, once you're at the gym long enough and you get like, you I mean you don't even understand. You just like know the vibe. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're just and they're doing whatever. You kind of spot them. You're like mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean the thing with that place, I mean just with any martial arts gym, but especially with Ronan, is that you'll have. People that have come in, especially, like, teaching classes, like, when I would have, like, first day people coming in and just giving me, like, their whole life story about yeah. stuff and, like, hi, yeah, nah, I just don't want to, you know, because I see red. It's like, I literally was going to say, yeah, like, I, I just see red. I see, I see yeah, red. I see red. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how to, like, spar and train. It's like, bro, just. I can't control it. I can't, yeah, it's just like, if we, if we go in and we're doing, like, I just, you know, I'm strong, so I don't know how to. It's like, no, you can If you can't train with a child then you probably shouldn't be training at all yeah because clearly you have a there's a disconnect between you understanding how to do the technique mm -hmm. and you know be vicious right like you know to bring up Vito. if Vito can teach small kids yeah then you should be able to do whatever because right. if he can teach small kids he's a i don't even know how many degree black belt he is been doing yeah. this all his whole life if he was to say, like, nah, I just don't know. Like, sometimes I might flip out. Right. But, okay, I still, that still would be crazy. But, like, okay, that makes sense because, like, you, like, a black belt. Or he whatever. at least understands it. Yeah. yeah. But, like, for everybody that walks in, like, yeah, nah, you know, I just see bread. It's like, yeah, those people don't last. Those people you got to watch. I'd be like, all right, we're going to put you over here. Yeah, because you're, <laughs> you're clearly out of your yeah, mind. Yeah, and you're just going to watch for today. That's what I do with the kids, like, and it's just their first day because they haven't done anything. Yeah. I'm like, we're just going to have you watch when we roll. You know, because, yeah. like, half the time if I bring them out, they're just going to, like... Freak out. Go at it. Yeah, they're going to freak out. They're going to go at it, which isn't a bad thing, but I'm like, you have no technique. So, like, most of them also don't understand jujitsu is just grappling. Yeah. So, you know, they'll go for, like, some punches and stuff. I'm like, no hitting. No <laughs> hitting. And they're like, this is martial arts. I'm like, yes, but no. Like, you know, like, yeah. it's grappling. Yeah. Teaching the kids class got to be awesome. I want to teach the kids class. It humbles me. I literally, when Vitor is showing a technique, like, we'll either break them up or, but if we do it together... Half the time when he's using me, I'm like, oh, this is like a good tip. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's showing something that I'm like, oh, I don't like, do oh, that. Yeah. Like, I'm going to start going to the kids' class. Literally. <laughs> and I watch the kids roll, and I'm like, if these kids were my size, they would dummy me. Some of them would, like, yeah. straight choke me out. Yeah. There's some really good kids. There's some really, really scary children in that class. They really are. And and I think, yeah, I think that's the... The dope thing about that place about that place is that there's so many different walks of life, so many people come from different backgrounds or whatever that you'll see like little kids who you would never think could like strangle you and mm -hmm. then they be in a position to like strangle you. Literally. But they're also like the sweetest kids. Yeah, too, the nicest thing. Yeah, like some of them I've seen literally grow up mm -hmm. and it's so wild to taller watch. Taller than you now? Like, ta like yeah. the ones I see they're taller than me, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, like when I came back and like I said, I was you know, um, Scott wanted me to work with Fiona doing Thai. And mm -hmm. it's like, Fiona's almost my size. Yeah. And, like, I remember when she came in the gym and she was, like, a little kid and, like, yeah. crawling around and just joking. and like, But she still does, but, I mean, but she's older but now. She was, yeah, she was, like, a baby. Yeah. I, it's, it's funny because I remember seeing pictures of her because she's been at the gym longer than I have. Yeah. And I remember seeing her, like, when she was, like, a white belt, you know, like, little... Small. And now she's probably like almost as tall as I am. Yeah, it's wild. It's she's so... one of the killers. She's so good. Yeah, she is. I've watched her roll. But she gets off the mats and she's so sweet. Yeah, she's just she's funny. She's funny. Her... She is funny. Yeah, yeah. She's got some sass. She's like her mom in the best way. Yeah, it's it's funny because um actually what was it Saturday after we was done like uh I forgot what I had said to her mom about Fiona but she did a laugh and like Scott and her have the same like like little kitty laugh and I mm -hmm. told her she was like ha, ha, ha. it's like that it's that laugh it's, ha, ha, ha. And then, Scott does the same one and I'm like yeah yeah, that, yeah that's why you're married you yeah. both do the same <laughs> laugh because Fiona was like yeah because I came to uh, I told her you know get in the ring put her gloves and stuff on and she was like laying down I'm like what's wrong she's like I'm tired I'm like you get 10 what are you tired yeah. from like you don't have to do anything but do, they do have her like in the best she, way. Like, yeah she, she does do a lot of stuff football. though football she yeah. does wrestling jujitsu like but she was she just talking like a, she was talking like she was like a 40 year old. Like a grown woman. Yeah, with a mortgage. I'm like, if you don't get up, like, yeah. Something cool too, Scott, I, he posted a video of her before and she plays the drums too. I'm like, I want to be Fiona when I grow up. I like, yeah, I, Fiona's cool. I didn't know she played the drums. It. Yeah, I saw it and she's like pretty good. I mean, I don't know like how well, how much she plays. Yeah. But enough to impress me. I was like, 
Yeah, I would want to be like Fiona. Because <laughs> the drums is an, an instrument that I would probably like to learn how to play if I like put time into playing an instrument. Yeah, yeah. So since you've been competing and been at Ronin, have you um, had that moment? Like, what was your, like, aha moment where, like, stuff started to, like, click for you training into getting into competing? Like, what was that moment you was like, Vito, like when you, when you were saying like how you were watching the kids class and he's like using you as a uke and you like, oh, mm -hmm. what was that moment for you? Um, maybe more like when I started like really paying attention to my rounds, if that makes sense. Like while ah. I was rolling, you know, like when I was competing, I was competing to win, obviously, because like, you know, you're like, oh, I have to go out there and win. Or even when you first start rolling, you're trying to kill Everybody. Anybody, everybody, yeah. yeah. So when I stopped freaking out and I was like, okay, we're in this position and I'm trying to actually do this, like try to like connect the moves that I was learning more, I would be like, ah, oh, that makes more sense or like follow through. And then I think like how I said, like competing, getting more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel like every time I compete, I'm, I'm still having that moment where I'm like, okay, I'm getting like more comfortable, like being in weird positions or like scrambles and stuff like that yeah. um so honestly i feel like i'm still like figuring that moment out you know what i mean yeah like every time i compete i'm more like okay so, i can do it so making more sense <laughs> yeah that's cool i feel that's what i mean i think it's making more sense for me to enjoy while like progressing too because i was still trying to go out there and just like win and like you know like use every ounce every muscle like all my strength uh -huh. um, like in my first match, so by the second one, I'd just be like gas, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, I have to do it again!" <laughs> like how many more matches? Yeah. So now I'm trying yeah. to be like a little more strategic, or like also to like play with the rule set, like IBJJF. Yeah. You know, like you could kind of stall, like which you might not want to do and stuff. But like if you play to their rule set, or like you yeah. know you're up, or you get the sweep and things like that, right. you can like reserve more energy yeah because you have more to come yeah yeah it's like when people sit in 50 50 for five hours yeah see like that that <laughs> is but they're playing to the rule set you yeah you got the whole match and you win and you're like, you might get an advantage because you stood up literally and yeah. that's how it goes some of the world's yeah. matches this year like i literally watch and it blows my mind because i'm like if you would sit up you get an advantage and then you win yeah that's it it's yeah. crazy you think like oh, i gotta submit them like nah you just y'all both for 50 50 just yeah. stand up <laughs> Literally. And you'll get the advantage because they'll be like, oh, he was about to pass. I wasn't going to mm -mm, pass. I wasn't. I was, was going to sit here. I was going to sit here because I'm, I'm tired. Literally. Yeah, man. Yeah, wow. Five years. I know. That's it's been crazy. That's wild. And you've been competing. Like, I feel like every time I open the page, like, you're competing somewhere. It's you and Emily somewhere competing, doing something. Yeah. I feel like I have been competing a lot, which has been good because I keep going back to, like, getting comfortable in it. But I also... This summer, I told myself that I didn't want to. I wanted to, like, take some time off and, like, enjoy training more. You know, like, a little more room for, like, creativity and then, like, learning. Uh -huh. um, and then I have a match, like, August. So I want to, like, take the summer to just train, enjoy friends, like, see family and stuff. Because that's kind of hard to do when you are competing yeah. all the time. And I'm not even at a high level. So I'm, like... I'm paying money to go do all of this. And my friends are like, oh, come to this. I'm like, I can't. I can't. I just paid $200 to go. Yeah. yeah. They're like, do you get paid for this? I'm like, no. Nah, I mean. Nah. <laughs> you might make like something if you yeah. do like a random bracket. But yeah. it is a very like disciplined, dedicated hobby to compared to some others. You know what yeah. I mean? Which I, I did not expect that coming in, but... I mean, I don't even look at it as a hobby at this point. If you're doing it at the level that you're doing it, with the consistency that you're doing it at, it's something that you love to do. Because yeah. hobby, hobby is more like, ah, I can let go of this. Like, not to say that you can't step away from this, but it's right. like, this is clearly a part of your life. So yeah. it's not a hobby. It's more like, this is a, just like how you go to work every day. And you, it's a part of your life. That's very true. Yeah. That's true. That's why, yeah, five years, man. That's I know. wild. And it went quick. Like, I mean, yeah. granted, like, COVID was in there for a year, so, like, that was just, like, not a real year, yeah. you know? Year, well, two years. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I sometimes can't believe I've been at the gym for five years. Yeah, like, I felt, when you said, yeah, yeah, I did your class first, I'm like, did? It's, that's wild. I literally, I vividly remember it. Like, I remember 
We worked in the cage. Yeah, the cage. I just remember, like, I remember the first time I walked in the gym, and I was just, like, kind of nervous. Like, like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I was like, hey, I'm here for my first class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't remember who was working the front desk. Oh, I don't remember either. Maybe, honestly, maybe, like, Stanley. Remember Stanley? I remember Stanley. Where is Stanley? I will see him from time to time. Like, he kind of comes and goes, but every time yeah. I see him, I love seeing him because he's always just been, like, so chill but yeah. cool. He's mad mysterious. Yeah. Stanley's <laughs> exactly. the most mysterious person. Literally. And he's a really good wrestler. You ever, oh, really? you ever grapple with him? I honestly, I've never seen him. Roll? Well, that's a lie. I, like, have seen him train, but I've never stuck around to watch, if that makes sense. We're always yeah. in passing. Yeah, like, I've rolled with him once or twice. He's a really good wrestler. Like, he's wow. he has a really good base. And he's just, yeah, he's just mad mysterious. Like, yeah. he says, like, one or two words. But, like, he, there's a little, like, attitude with it. Yeah, but, like, yeah, yeah. Funny but a funny attitude. Yeah, he's not, like, being mean. He's uh -huh. just, like, joking. And he says it, like, he has, like, a really low yes. tone. Yeah, he's, yeah, Stanley's hilarious. But yeah. he really does come and go. I think I saw him a couple months. Like, I've seen him yeah. this year. And it's always, it's always like a funny, yeah. mysterious vibe. And then yeah. I don't see him again. And I think, I think Stanley's a, Stanley's a nurse. He's in the Something medical, like yeah, that. he's a nurse. So that's why he's not, he's not around a lot. Mm -hmm. But okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah, probably, probably was Stanley. It probably was. Because yeah, we had, getting an MMA in the mornings. Now it's, don't begin an MMA in the mornings, but jiu-jitsu in the mornings. Have you been to the morning jiu-jitsu classes? And does, um, who was teaching in the morning? I know Joe, I think, was teaching some of them. Joe teaches, like, the early ones. And then I want to say, like, Corey Meeks teaches. Corey, and then, um, and, uh, and then somebody, um. Brian? Brian, yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't made it to their classes, um, but I will go into the morning sometimes and drill. Like yeah. since, and that's kind of newer. Since I'm gonna focus more on no gi, um, those mornings are gi classes. So Emily and I, and two of our friends, will go in um, and just like drill more no gi stuff recently. Yeah, I'll see them there though. And honestly, like big groups, I'm honestly impressed how many people are there at that 7 a.m. Yeah, it's I mean like a lot 15 of it. plus. Yeah, it is. Like when I teach, when I used to teach the beginning of MMA in the mornings, it would be a lot of people. And I mean, a lot of those guys got jobs, so they go early. Yeah. They, they go early to get it out of the way. To like get their training out of the way, so then they can get the rest of their day going. Dedication though, because that's early as hell to be rubbing up on somebody and oh, 100%. and then to go to work. But when you do that, like when I do wake up and do something like that in the morning, the rest of my day I feel so good. Yeah. The only thing is, like by three p.m., I'm like, I'm done. I'm ready to like pass out for a nap. So yeah. if you can't, it makes it hard. But like that, those first days, you know, you like you take a shower, you come. Your first three hours of work, you feel amazing. <laughs> like, I just strangled people this morning. This is easy. <laughs> so, since you've been doing this, has your... I know you said your mom hasn't... She only watched the video. So, mm -hmm. are you ever going to try to get her to go to one of your matches? Uh, she might one day. Like, I think she more so... I grew up dancing. So, when I started doing martial arts i think my whole family was like what are you talking about because mm. it was just like a full 180 from what i did you know what really? i mean because like, i did like ballet and tap and jazz and hip-hop yeah yeah um but that's why i found or how i found ronan i couldn't find like a dance studio for like you say, what you found ronan because of dance yeah i well when i moved to columbus i couldn't find it like a drop-in dance mm -hmm. class for adults it was more like you know targeted towards elementary middle school high schoolers and stuff uh -huh. um so I did a boxing class, or like Googled boxing, and Ronan was like the high, highest rating, best views and stuff like that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, back to like, I took your class Good. and then everything like that. Um, so they were confused at it at first, like more so just because they have never, we've never seen it. And before I did it, I never knew what it was either, really. Oh. Um, would she come to a match? I think she would at some point. But I think, like, when my brother played football, yeah. he was a wide receiver. She would, like, look away. She cringed every during, time. During the pass or during the, what's it called? The play? The play. Yeah, during it. I <laughs> mean, they, they have thing. to pass the ball, so yeah. Um, The play, and then she'd be like, okay, what happened? You know, like, she gets nervous watching, uh, watching potential violence. violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'll, like, send the videos of my matches, basically give, like, a brief description <laughs> of what she's about to see. And then she'd be like, oh, that's awesome. You know, like, she's supportive, but... She just can't watch it. But uh, she did come to the jujitsu event that was in um, Newark. Oh, okay. That was close. So she's been around it. And she was like, oh, that was actually really fun. Okay. So so you are the first woman in your family to do this. Yes. So you're a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. How you feel about that? It feels so cool because my brothers know that I could beat them up. 
Have they, you, they both know that. Have you beat up any of your brothers? My younger brother, yeah. Oh. My younger brother's ten, and like I said, like he's as tall as I am now, so yeah. he really will try to like step to me. Um, my older brother, he's twenty-seven. I mean, I think he's impressed that I can take him down, but realistically, if he's gonna like punch me, it's gonna hurt. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, because he's a big dude. Yeah, but they both do like it. Like Dar, my older brother, he's really interested in it. Like when I send him my videos, I can tell he's like. Into, oh, like this is have cool, they, so. has he been he hasn't been he was gonna come to one um but like he's also really busy like he travels a lot with his wife and stuff uh -huh. but when i send him my videos like he's really like oh that's cool as hell you know like he's like really interested hmm. in it so i'm sure he would come to one mm -hmm. um most of the time too though they're like i travel out of state for them like i don't remember the last one i did locally in ohio yeah, yeah. So, since you were looking for that dance studio, and then you found Ronin, <laughs> rather than dance, <laughs> did have you gotten back into dance? Yes, which is nice, honestly. Um, I found a studio maybe, like, last year okay. that did, like, adult drop-ins. Um, and I was nervous about it because I wanted to find a class I actually liked, you know? Uh -huh. So, it took me some time to find a good studio and a good choreographer on top of that. Okay. And I finally did. Um, so, I've been getting back into that. And I actually, like, three months ago, sent out my dance resume and got hired. So, I've been teaching once a week. Huh. Mm -hmm. And that's been really cool. I think that's, like, something I was kind of missing that I enjoyed because the way some people have grown up competing, I mean, even the way I compete now... That's all I did growing up with dance. You competed in dance? Yeah, like high level. Like every... you got served? You got served every weekend. <laughs> you don't know now. You go <laughs> find that party. Or what's the one? Stomp... No, not Stomp the Yard. Stomp the Yard. I hate um, that one. Crap. I uh, forget what it was. But honey? It was... Like oh, honey? Honey, I learned so much from that movie. Oh my God. <laughs> I learned so much from Honey. When she's watching the basketball players and she's like... Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I watched it and I was like, this girl's a genius. Oh. <laughs> but mind you, I was like probably seven or yeah. eight with that movie. Like, you was looking at Jessica Alba like, this This is it. I was, this, she got it. For I, real. This is what I'm going to do. I'm. Oh, I legit, I was like moved to LA, like all of it. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> the circle, the swish. <laughs> I'd watch people like jump rope, make it like, yeah, that could be a dance movie. You know I mean? Oh my God. <laughs> but no, every weekend was like, you got served dance competition. That's wild. You, know, you were battling people on the weekends? Every weekend. So, I mean. Is there a video of this? Oh, my mom has like so many tapes. Oh, there were, she there needs was to like send structure one. to it though. Nah, you know nah. I, mean? I don't want I don't want to believe that there was structure. I they wanna... were not like I was not like nine years old underground. Like... Uh, I want to believe that it was like in like an alley with like with like cardboard on the ground <laughs> and he was like, Come on, sucker and you just started like doing like the, the thing and like See out of out. my out of my group, my dance group that would have been me though, because I was this I was always with the older girls yeah. and I was the smallest one. So yeah. I would be in the front like you know, like the like little, a beaver. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? There was always, like, that crazy one that was just, like, talking crap. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, especially going up, that was me. <laughs> Yo, that's wild. So you, oh, my God. So you started competing in, so you started, you started in the dance. What got you in the dance? Jessica Alba? No. Oh. So I did dance. I mean, my mom just, like, put me in it when I was three. Okay. And I just, like, gravitated toward it, towards it really naturally. Um, But, like, the first few years, I just did ballet and tap because I was at, like, more of, like, a... Um, more like classical dance studio yeah. and then like when I got to be like seven eight you know I like wanted to do other genres that they didn't really have yeah, yeah. so I actually grew up taking dance from two studios I did one like for like ballet tap jazz lyrical and then the other one was hip-hop and that was like more like performance you know like technique might have not been like the highest compared to the other but like they what the other one lacked this one like filled in on and okay. stuff like that um that's where I got like the honey. The honey to inspo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you were battling people. But yeah, but yeah, I did that. I That's mean, like wild. till I was eighteen, and then I went off to college, and then came back. So yeah, it's always been like. I mean, even when I wasn't doing it, I'll listen to music and always just like be making dances up in my head. So I knew yeah. I wanted to get back to it, and then like like I randomly was like, I should start teaching again, and I just did it. Wow. Have you put Have you put your dance with your jujitsu? I think it's helped. You mean like, do they go like side and side? No. Yeah. Or do you mean like I'm taking like barambolo moves? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, like, my you dance put, like you do a leg drag <laughs> movements to do no, like 
Yeah, well, I mean, like the the some of the movements, but yeah, like the the whole vibe of like you competing in dance, you using it to clearly like it it helped you like structure. Well, it helped structure a way about you liking um certain styles and stuff like that. Has that helped with your jujitsu? Where you like okay. I know with dance, I like this style. With jiu-jitsu, I like this style. Yes. Yeah, I definitely... I think dance has helped me with jiu-jitsu in, like, exactly what you said. I will... Some things I pick up on easier. Uh-huh. So, just by thought, like, what I've always done is I'll just practice practice those more. Yeah. And then I've also always liked how jiu-jitsu is, like, a team sport, but you're also, like, out there alone. Because yeah. when I would dance, you know, it was kind of the same. Like, I would do, like, group numbers... But I also would do a lot of solos and stuff like that. Do the battles where you got to like walk out by yourself and start pop locking. Yeah, yeah, but you would have like, you know, like your whole squad, your whole team with you. But Go like, Justice! <laughs> Go Justice! Literally, you yeah. would be like hyping you up the whole time. But you also were like out there like whether you killed it or messed up like it yeah. was you. And I've always liked that with jujitsu too. It's like a very independent but like behind the scenes so many people behind right. you. So I think dan- dance has definitely helped me with jujitsu. Okay. That's cool. I like the discipline of it, too, and, like, the routine it gives you. Like, I always had a routine with dance growing up, so I think that's something that jujitsu like, makes me feel, like, comfortable in. It's kept you in. Okay. So, it's been, yeah. So, it's it's some of the aspects of dance have mirrored over to, like, jujitsu. For sure. That's cool. (laughs) Yo. (laughs) My honey time. Yeah. And you got, like, you got dance battle tapes. So Stump the Yard, I know, I mean, that movie isn't, like, amazing, but you have The first to give, five minutes. I was going to say, you have to give credit when Chris Brown yeah. was in that movie. Yeah, that's that's the only reason why anybody went to go see that movie. I was literally about to say, they did, the marketing team... Was amazing. Was amazing. Because I thought... so that, smart. Bro, I thought that was about to be a whole movie with Chris Brown dancing. I and saw he's it, so good. Everyone was like, yo, Chris Brown is in this movie. It's going to be crazy. I saw, the, I saw the preview at another movie, like, yo, Chris Brown about to be in a dance <laughs> movie? This is about to be crazy. Literally. I'm going to... We'll see that got there I, I think i was with my i think it was just i think i was with all dudes too <laughs> then we all went to go see it everyone wanted to see it, it did not matter yeah <laughs> i was just sitting there and then like chris he did that he killed it he like slid on his head or whatever he did mm-hmm. and then we like yo and then he got like a spray can out of nowhere and sprayed the thing and i'm like yo and then the dude for some reason they were battling dudes with tattoo tears Literally. and they were mexican i didn't get it and then <laughs> and then they came out i'm like no he shot him and then like five minutes in. And I was so tight and devastated, I didn't leave. Yeah, oh, I just, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, I didn't they stay knew. because I liked the movie. I yeah. stayed because I was sad. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm about to have to watch Columbus Short mm-hmm. for another <laughs> hour and 45 minutes because you killed Chris Brown in the first five minutes of this stupid but movie. genius. Literally genius. I, yo, in my head, Stomp the Yard was about to be better than... You got served because to me, you got oh, served. You got served so good. It's one of the greatest movies ever. It really it's is. terrible acting. Everything about the movie is awful besides the dancing. But I was gonna say, but like, the dancing was so the good. The dancing was so good. The dancing was so good. That I love that movie so much that actually, when I was a kid and it finally came out the DVD, I remember like just being in high school and junior high and high school, like sometimes cutting school to hang out with girls. That one time, I thought one of the girls that I let over at, at the house stole the DVD. Oh, no. I ain't let nobody in the house after that. I was like, nah, we got to meet you someone. You were that serious about I was tight because I'm like, yo, who stole my you guys? So, I'm like, I watched that. Me and my mother used to watch that movie all the time. We would watch it until the last battle. And we both watched the last battle like they were going to lose. We didn't. We oh, act, my for, God. It was so good because we always felt like, oh, they might you lose. You just felt that first feeling. Yeah. We're just like, yo, they might, they might lose. Like... I like and for and and me and my mother would laugh because I didn't like Little Saint. I didn't mm-hmm. care, I just didn't care for the kid. But I will, every time I would watch that battle with her, we'd be like, oh, oh you getting hyped <laughs> like yo, yo! And then when he like did the one uh, move with like Amari, I like jumped into their arms, uh, <laughs> bro. Oh, yeah, that movie is amazing. That movie is good. Yeah, and I thought Stomp the Yard was about to be like better. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, Chris Brown and two hours of dancing. Yeah, it was gonna be crazy. And I remember my peak. brother was like this movie's gonna be crazy. And he wasn't like... Because it was a dance movie. It was like the first dance movie you saw. Like, everyone was like, oh, shit. Like, it's yeah. gonna be crazy. And it was peak Chris Brown. This was like, exactly. yo. This was like... No, this was the second album, I think. So this was like Off the Wall, I think, Chris Brown. Was oh, it? Oh, Off the... Wait. No, what's that song called? Um, Wall to Wall. Wall to Wall. And that music video, 
Yeah. I think this was that around that time. Crazy. Oh, no, it was peak Chris Brown. Yeah, this was like peak. Yeah, this was like before all of the other controversy with him. This yeah. was like, yo, this movie about to be fire. Yeah. And then we and then was wild as Columbus Short is in You Got Served. He's one of the background dancers. Oh, really? Yeah, I wa- I've watched that movie a lot. Oh, look, you're like, I know. Yeah, I've watched. <laughs> I've watched the credits. I've, wait, I've watched, <laughs> I've watched the, the behind the scenes to You Got Served. I know that there's a part two. I didn't watch it. I... See, that's not a movie that needs a part two. No, it doesn't need a part two. Like, there's so many movies that actually don't need a part two, but that's for sure one that didn't. Honey didn't need a part two. They made a honey two. They made a they, honey two. Matter of fact, I think there's like four honeys. Okay, see? They should have stopped at the one. Yeah. I don't even think I've seen Honey Two, and if I have, I might have seen it. But look, I don't even remember if I did, so it's really not worth watching. Yeah, I don't know why you would make a honey. I mean, I saw Honey and was just laughing the whole time because I just couldn't believe Jessica Alba. Like, uh-huh. I was just. No. The, like the the, oh, I see it. Oh, the vast. She's that. watching it like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. But okay, that also was the time. Okay, this actually might be why. So that was when I watched it when I was like seven or eight. That might have been why my mom put me in hip hop. Because maybe I was like, this movie's so good. My mom's like, nah, we need you need educated. <laughs> yeah, like, we need to. F- Whoa! I was out in the back doing the, the <laughs> basketball. She was like, oh, we gotta get her. It's like, yo, I think she might look like Little Romeo. <laughs> yeah. He was in that movie. He was. Yeah, I watched that movie once, and I was like, "Ah, I'm good." I never saw the other movie with um, what's her name, the Julia Styles or whatever. It was that one with the, her and a, it was a white girl and a black dude. It was that mm. that dance movie. It was like they were in a relationship. I think she did like ballet or like Are classical. Sure, it wasn't flipped, and it was a white guy. No, Channing Tatum. Step up. No, not step up. It was a white girl, black dude, and they. Oh man! Tell me more of the story. I could probably pick it up. Okay, um, well, it was white white girl, black dude. Uh, she was a dancer and more like classical stuff. He was a black dude, so of course they stereotypical. He knew how to do classical, but of course he knew hip hop too. Yeah. Um, it was one of those. It was around the time where they where they would do those movies where it's like white girl, well white girl, black dude, where like she hung out with him and then all of a sudden she started getting rhythm and like. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I am so embarrassed that I did not pick this up first. This is Save the Last Dance. Yeah. One of my favorite movies. Yeah, I've never seen that. Slap in the face to myself that I did not know that's what you're talking about. I love that. That is my one when of my she was sitting in the chair? Oh, yeah. She tries out for Juilliard at the end. Yeah. And that is literally one of my favorite dance movies. And yeah, she starts dating Derek. That's how his sister says it the whole movie. She's like, Derek? Like, <coughs> it's so it's so good. It was wild. as like her career, I thought, would go farther. She did like that. She did O. You ever saw O? I haven't seen O. Well, her, it was a, it was a um, modern telling of Othello you know the story of Othello Mm-mm. it's a dude he um it's a I think it's a Shakespeare uh play but it's a guy he uh falls in love with this chick like madly in love with her. as far as like the movie goes it's really good but he, he's Makai Pfeiffer is dating her um he's a he plays basketball and she's just like a you know straight A student or whatever she's white clearly he's black yeah. so that aspect plays into the movie but um Damn, this white dude. I can't think of this white dude's name, but he was also somebody. Uh, I th- was he in Cruel Intentions? I forgot. But nevertheless, but Kyle Pfeiffer was dating Shorty. They were, you know, having a good relationship. His homeboy was a hater. So he sought to, like, not just break them up, but destroy Othello, like destroy his life. Oh, wow. So he um, had Othello thinking that she was cheating on him. And Othello is, like, really, like, obsessive over her. Yeah. So he gets to the point where he, like, is, like, getting, like, aggressive with her. Almost to the point where he he didn't put his hands on her, but almost to the point where he gets to there. Oh. Um, the other dude is, is setting Othello up. He, uh, he has this other chick that he don't even really care about. But he uses her to help set up Othello where he has sex with her in Othello's room and leaves her panties and says that that's his girls. And he like... Oh, it got messy. Yeah, he like ties in another dude. And then basically everybody ends up dead besides the guy that, um, that set hating? it up. Yeah, he ends up going to prison. It's a great movie. It's Othello. She was like super popular in the she 90s. Like, she, she was did like in movies. like every movie because she was also in 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, I remember that movie. And like a lot of, so like I don't love that movie, but like a lot of girls love that movie. Yeah, 10 Things But I... yeah, Save the Last Dance, that's a good one. I would the turn playlist, the chair around. The playlist, the soundtrack to that is so good too. 
Like you can do what's on there, Ice Cube. You can um, do it. <laughs> Put your back into it. Oh, that song you sing. <laughs> it still does. I'll listen to that before I compete sometimes. And I'm like, let's go. <laughs> you can do it. You listen to it. You can do it. Put your back into it. Uh-huh. I can do it. Put your into it. Put your back into it. Put, Put your, your ass into it. it. Yo. Literally. That's insane. You seen some of that, you know, hyped up Ice Cube? You can do it. That's, Look, you can do it. <laughs> that's insane, yo. The fact that you have a you have a dance you have dance battle mixtapes and you would <laughs> Julie, <laughs> Jessica Alba. When Stump the Yard did come out, I definitely tried to do the elbow stand like Chris Brown did. Oh, I think everybody Yeah, did. I literally everybody yeah, did. I think everybody, everybody was just everybody was just sad. Yeah. I think every I think that's low key, I think that's why Columbia's short career died because like people was like disappointed. Nah. Yeah, like you know what's wild is that there's like I, I want to I know for sure there's a part two to Stomp the Yard. I think there there's is. like yeah. two or three of them. Like I watched one of them. Like see, I knew better. I didn't do that. Nah, because you gotta watch terrible movies sometimes. So I watched this. The, like the next, I think it was like either the second or third Stomp the Yard. Um, and uh, the Promises Promises girl from Three O W was in it. The one with the Promises, promises yeah, with the lisp. She was in it. She was like the. The sexy chick, um, she was in it, and who else was in it? I forget. It don't matter. But um, Columbus Short was like he makes a he makes like a cameo guest appearance in it oh, of because like he does. because yeah. like in this one, um, some kid that kind of looks like him goes to the school for whatever reason, like some kind. I think it was almost like like some kind of drumline reason that he goes there. Uh, Another good movie. Shout out to Drumline. Yeah, Drumline <laughs> is actually a good movie. Yeah. But um, he goes there. Um, they trying to battle some other dudes. Not that they, not the, uh, not the other. I don't forgot what the group was called. But of course, the group that they was battling was like forty year old college students. Because every time they were old, they always Grant old. From the first one, I was like, we need a background check. He's he's looking a little old. Yeah, yeah. Cause even if even if he's like a super senior, like yeah. he's still somebody's dad. Six year, yeah. Yeah, you can't be forty five in college <laughs> talking about you on a step team. Literally, that's wild. But like, there's a there's a part at the end of the movie where um Columbus Short is like. Now, uh, cause one of the dudes, like, cause big is big boy in it. What somebody's in it? Either big, it's a rapper that's in it. But one of the dudes, he's like comes back and he's like, oh, David Banner's in it. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, this is a bad movie. So dudes like come back after the dance battle's over and somebody brandishes a gun and dude is like, yeah, we don't do that here in college. Like uh, he said that. He oh. said that out his mouth while somebody had a gun. <laughs> he said that out his mouth. Mouth. We don't do that in college. What? What is that? Me, yeah. I have a gun. I don't care what you do yeah. in college. I'll kill you. Literally, literally, at that point, I'd be like, I don't really. And the dudes didn't even go there. David Banner didn't go to the school. David Banner was extorting the the the, the Columbus Short. Uh, this sounds bad. Re, re, this is a bad movie. This sounds bad. But you know, that's a yo. Stop, so I think it's like Stomp the Yard three or something like that. Because Step Up has like seventeen See, movies. See the first Step Up, I really really like. It. Tiana Taylor's, I think, in the last one. Really? Yeah. See, I sadly gave up and that makes me sad because I really like the step ups. I like the first one. I like the second one too, yeah. like back to the streets or something. Like that one is really good choreography <laughs> and then they slowly start getting like I really like it in the sense of like it's like, you know, still advertising dancing and like yeah. all those dancers are like working their movies that this and the other. Yeah. But I'm also like, you gotta stop. The sto- or at least have a strong storyline to back it up. You know what I mean? And you can't really with dance. You can't. It's, it's, you just it do really one. It's, hard. it's a one, one and done. Literally, you just need one. Save the last dance. They didn't do more because they knew that would go That was on. it. Yeah, you didn't need more than that. Yeah. St- yeah. So, Stump the Yard's like Fast and Furious. They're on like freaking like 12 at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think it's 10. This is the 10th one. This is... I think I saw family. a trailer and like Vin Diesel's like... Legit flying, like not really, but he's jumping from one car to yeah, they, and I'm like, they gave up on reality, got, yeah, a long time ago, a long time. But long I think, time. yeah, nah, but sometimes you gotta watch bad movies. Like, my favorite bad movie is, um, is Moonfall with Holly Berry. It is about, I haven't it, seen that. It's about it. It's so there's a conspiracy theory that people, there's some people believe that the moon is a alien structure and it's not an actual moon, like the moon's fake. It's not a the moon is fake, isn't it? So there's some people that believe that, <laughs> that the, it's an alien structure that somebody made or that what that creatures made and yada 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 and so this movie kind of goes off of that that idea and um Sounds like a bad it's pilot. like two hours long yeah. like two hours and like twenty minutes it is awful at one point 
This is how bad it is. John Leguizamo's in it, sadly, and he's a great actor, but he's in that terrible movie. At one point, they are running from the moon because, like, the moon's gravitational pull is, like, oh. once it gets out, because once, the, like, the moon gets out of, like, once the moon gets, like, out of orbit, as far as Earth orbit and all that, everything is going to, like, screw up. Yeah. Things start floating. So, the gravitational pull of the moon is, like, messed up or whatever, and stuff is, like, floating and flying all over the place, and they're driving away from it. And and as they're driving, the dude is like trying to go faster, and they're like, "Yo, put it in sport mode," and he like clicks the car on sport mode mm -hmm. and goes faster. And this is a, they dead ass, <laughs> like they dead. It's not like ha ha, this is a joke. Like they dead ass. This sounds really bad. It's it, yeah. If you want to watch a bad movie, that this sounds like a bad movie. Yeah, if you want to watch Moonfall, it's a horrible. It's a good movie to watch if you want to see something bad. If you want to just put on something in the background or you just hanging out with friends, you're like hey, you want to watch some you wanna shit. Watch, you want to waste some time? Yeah, yeah, like yo, let's look like let's watch this. Like it is. It is sounding good. Bad. That makes me sad for my girl too. I like her. Yeah, Halle Berry. Halle Berry's done some. She's done some great movies, but she's done some really bad ones. Yeah. Like Catwoman. She looked good though. She did look good, but that movie was terrible. I didn't see it, but I did see like her in it though. Yeah, Cap Swordfish wasn't even a good movie. Only reason why it doesn't sound good. So, only... Like these aren't these don't even have strong titles to pull you. Well, the only, well, I mean, I don't know how old you were when Swordfish came out, but the only reason why anybody watched Swordfish is because Holly Berry's breast are in that movie. Like this. Is oh the first... wait, then maybe I've heard of it because I feel like I've heard of that reason. Yeah, that's the only reason she got paid a million dollars to show her breast. And then after that, then she did like a movie that I won't watch, but she did um with Billy Bob Thornton, uh, Monsters Ball, which was like basically a porno. Like mm -hmm. her and Billy after, cause Diddy, like P Diddy was in that movie. He was her husband. He dies on death row, and then I forgot who. I think Billy Bob was like a lawyer or something, but like she was like all broken up behind it, and for some reason like they had he they. That's the movie she won an Oscar for, but they oh. had mad sex in that movie, like, a she lot. She was our Miss Ohio before. Did you know that? She's from Ohio? So that's the thing. I don't know if she is from Ohio, but at some point she definitely lived here because, like, in the 90s she won Miss Ohio. Um, Miss Ohio. Okay. Not, so I, like, grew up, like, doing, like, the Miss Ohio scholarship program, and then there's also, like, Miss America and, like, Miss Universe. Like, there's a couple of different... Misses? Same Misses things, yeah. Yeah. And she did Miss Ohio, I think, that would run for Miss Universe. Huh. But, yeah, like, you could pull it up. Like, it's, like, an old picture. Like, it was, like, back when, like, for the swimsuit competition portion, like, they would wear, like, one pieces, and it's, yeah. like, an old-fashioned one piece. But she won. She has the crown, the sash, all of it. Wow. It was in the 90s. Yeah, that's wild. I know. Oh, man. But I don't think she's from here. I, I don't know. I have to look it up because I was like, oh, that's interesting. I never knew that. Yeah, that's mad random. Holly Berry was Miss, was Miss Ohio. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she did Moonfall. <laughs> yeah, and fucking you got served. She's as representing. A, yeah, and fucking, yeah, just stomped the yard, man. But um, let me see. What else do I want to ask you? So did your dancing. Got you. Yeah, now you're a dance teacher, mm -hmm. and then you also coach kids mm -hmm. doing jujitsu. Do what do you like about coaching the kids? Um, that's a good question. I like, I like helping them. I know that might sound a little cliche, but yeah. like, I like helping them and seeing them improve. And over time, like having relationships with them in yeah. the sense of like you know like fiona for example seeing her grow up and like every year she gets older or just like knowing getting to know the kids and then see them progress as a student but yeah. then also like you know just as a person um with the dance i would say it's different for jujitsu and dance the kids i teach for dance i really enjoy teaching because i can tell that they really enjoy having me there in the sense of like they're really learning huh. um, what I'm teaching them and that excites me to teach them more right um because the studio I'm teaching at is I would say similar to my like ballet uh studio yeah. like they don't have much hip-hop or like a hip-hop might not be their strongest genre right um so I come from like a pretty confident like hip-hop resume so when I have taught the kids like I can see the excitement on their face or I'm like I can tell they're like, oh, like she, she does hip hop, yeah. which I called my mom and I was cracking up because I was like, it's so like 
stereotype. Like I'm like black kid coming in. You just yeah. like, I'm like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know what you're doing. You're just like sitting. Just... Literally doing like the pops locks and doing the basketball movement. Um, and then like for jujitsu, like I said, like I like watching them progress. Like seeing one kid like practice something, and then and then the next week get it or something. Huh. It's, it's funny either way. That's good. That's good. And that's. Do you see yourself ultimately like? I know you uh teaching at this dance studio and mm-hmm. coaching stuff. Do you want to open your own dance studio? I don't know. Like, being at this dance studio right now has shown me, like, what it really takes in the sense of, like, you know, that's always been, like, a fun thought. I feel like people that even do jujitsu are like, oh, like, it'd be so fun to open up a gym. But, like, when you, like, sit back or, like, take a step back and really think about it, like, that studio would be your place in your home and, like, you're kind of there. Um, I don't think anytime soon. I've always thought that on and off, but I would want it to be... Like, a studio I'm proud of, obviously, which everyone would want. But, like, I would want it to be a very strong hip-hop, ballet, jazz. So, I'd really want to make sure I have all of the right things in place to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's... I think that's an open-ended question for me so far. Because, like, I think one day I could see it, but it's also not, like... It's not on my list yet. Okay. And to close it all the way out, do you see yourself like what would you get as your blue belt self yes right what do you want to tell your black belt self Ooh. what do i want to tell my black belt self congratulations oh. <laughs> you made it <laughs> honest like first thing for sure that um congratulations hopefully you're still having as much fun as you are now. Okay. Look back, see how far you've come, what you've been doing over the last <laughs> hip hop. <laughs> yeah. All of the 30 years. I don't know. Congratulations overall, I would say. Because that, that'll be a big goal when that happens. Or a big a goal accomplished when that happens. Nice, nice. Well, thank you, Justice, for coming out to the I Cut My Own Hair podcast and sharing the fact that you were a dance battle. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> Go Justice! Fun go fact. Justice! Go <laughs> Justice! Yo, that is. I'll never step to me on the street is basically what you guys have learned yeah, today. Don't, yeah, because she. Because I'll either armbar you. Break out some cardboard. Or break, out, yeah. break dancing. Or step to you either way. Yeah, <laughs> and start doing stepping. But yeah, well, thank you again. Um, where can. Do you have any. Wait, before we actually finish this whole way do you have any of your matches on like youtube or anything like that do you have a youtube to show any of your stuff sadly i don't i used to have a hit um a dance youtube and it was like my username was like justice stanford and i don't know if it was just like because it was inactive for a few years uh-huh. but it's down now um but no all of my matches are in flow grappling like just justice stanford um somewhere on my instagram which is just my name too but is yeah. it flow don't you have to pay for flow yeah and oh. those and they'll get you if you're gonna get it you're dropping one fifty right then and there. They'll they sell it like twelve dollars a month. You're like, I can I can do that. You type in your payment, one fifty comes out of your bank account. So just a little heads up. Oh flows <laughs> yeah. flows finesse. Yeah, they they did the same argument to stump the yard. So So Flow is Chris Brown killing us. Exactly. Flow is Chris Brown killing us. Oh, but man. no, it was fun. I'm glad I came. Thanks for having me, Jay. Yeah, no doubt. So yeah. You know, I appreciate you. I'm happy. I'm happy about your growth. Like, it's really dope to see, like, where you are now, like, yeah. as far as competing and stuff. Like, it's like, I was watching one of your videos. I think I commented under it, and you, like, on board the girl. You did. It was yeah. so nice. Yeah, because I was really, I was really about to cry. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I never, th- like, I would have never thought this. And now yeah. I'm not saying that, like, I, you're not capable of it, but it's just like, wow. No, in the sense of, like, you, like I said, like, I really took your class the first time and knew nothing. And then now you just like on bar chicks in like thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, that's wild, yo. I was, I felt like a like a proud dad. I was just like, <laughs> oh my god, like that's so cool. But yeah, so when's your next competition? You said it will be August nineteenth. I believe is the date. It will be on Flow Grappling. It's for um, an event called Sogi, and it's actually a ladies' night. So oh. it's like an all female card, which will be pretty cool. Okay. Um, it's actually a rematch with this girl. I fought her before, and I lost in overtime. Uh, so we should have a pretty good match again. So I'm excited about it. All right. Well, cool. I got some time to set up for it. Yeah. Well.